No matter if you've been working hard on inbound marketing and developing content for a while now, or if you've just recently dipped your toes into the large content marketing pool, the whole goal for your content is to have it drive attention for your business, engage people, drive leads, and ultimately be a revenue generator. But your content may be getting overlooked, and the traffic it does pull in seems mostly uninterested, as conversions into a deeper relationship with you are minimal. Although content is king, yours may feel a little more like a court jester. In order to achieve the results that you're looking for from your content, there's a lot more that needs to go into each and every piece than just good writing. Hi, I'm Jason, and today we're going to enlighten you with a few golden nuggets of information about the top ways to develop content for your B2B company that gets attention, that engages, and of course, drive sales. Our agenda for today is the big picture. I'll lay out the why you should care aspect of content marketing. Then we'll dive right into six golden nuggets of developing exceptional content. Unfortunately, we don't have time today to go into detail on all aspects of your content plans and development, as we're going to attempt to do this in just under 30 minutes. But if your application is accepted, we can customize the feedback for you in our free strategy session. So first of all, why should you care? Well, content is of course one piece of the bigger marketing and sales picture, but in my opinion, it's the most important. According to recent reports, over 70% of B2B buyers use content to define solutions to their problems, and over 50% have already decided on what company to buy from before ever talking to a salesperson due to content marketing. Also, 90% of B2B buyers say online content has a moderate to major effect on purchasing decisions. Now, the content is king saying to me is a limited perspective. A better way to equate this is to say content is the biggest shift in the math behind lowering CAC or customer acquisition cost and increasing LTV or lifetime value. There are a lot of aspects to that perspective as every new customer has some sort of cost associated with acquiring them, content can effectively lower that cost. Examples of this are leads from organic content, gained through SEO, drip emails that nurture those leads, or deal stage content shared through newsletters that align your company's perspectives with your sales process. Lifetime value can also be increased with content. Examples of this could be client retention based and upsell or cross-sell based content, or client advocate based content that brings everything full circle to bring in new customers through referrals. These types of content serve to increase the revenue gained from each client. Effectively using content can significantly lower your acquisition costs or business expenses, at the same time as boosting revenue through lead generation and lifetime value increases, becoming quite a driver of your profit and your business growth. Now let's get right into the very first golden nugget. Align every piece of content with the audience and stage of the person reading it. If you have a one-size-fits-all perspective, you're pretty much shooting yourself in the foot from the time that you spend generating content. Hopefully you've done some work on your target audiences and personas that you're trying to build your business around as well as develop content for. Make sure you know the answers to these questions and more before developing content. What are your company firmographics? Why do they buy? Where are they located? Who are the roles you're trying to engage with this content? What are their goals and frustrations? For each piece of content you write, you need to have specific audiences and personas in mind as the targets for this content. You should also combine the audience with the stage that they're at in their buyer journey. Some of you may use a funnel for stages. We use the bow tie, so it's more of a growth marketing perspective. Starting on the left, uh, attention is, is someone engaging with your company prior to providing any sort of contact info. A lead is a, an MQL, a marketing qualified lead, who has provided their contact information. A deal is where they're an SQL, sales qualified lead, and are in contact with sales. Then they hopefully become a client. 
then we still want to be marketing to people after they're a client in order to retain them, upsell and or cross-sell them, and have them as advocates telling other people about your company. When you develop content, put yourself in the mind of that person at that stage. What are their needs at that stage of their journey? What do they need to understand to move on to the next stage in your buyer journey? As you develop content for the different stages in your funnel, bow tie, flywheel, or whatever you use, you want to shift from educational and knowledge-based content to persuasion content, more focused on your business and what solutions you provide. Then, shift to a combination of knowledge and persuasion content when they're a client in the retention, upsell, and advocate stages. Golden nugget number two. Have a process for topic creation. Now, one of the areas that we consistently see companies falter with their content is what topics they cover. And this is so incredibly important because if people aren't interested in the topic of the content, nothing else matters. They're not going to click through, they're not going to engage, you know, which is a stopgap to all your content lead gen, your nurturing, your business growth, etc. You need to develop some sort of process or plan around what you're going to provide content on. Now, there are two ways to tackle this, and using both qualitative and quantitative is best. But if you use just the qualitative side, well, that's definitely a great start. For the qualitative approach, we use a spreadsheet that encompasses seven steps of discovery. Personas, goals, challenges, questions, solutions, company role in the solution. The personas through challenges steps can be pulled directly from your previous segmentation work if you've built that out. To quickly go through each column, personas, who are you trying to reach? Goals, for each persona, what are they trying to achieve? Challenges, for each persona, what is standing in their way of achieving their goals? Questions, well, what questions will they be asking in order to solve their challenges and achieve their goals? You can come up with the challenges and questions from your own knowledge of your target audiences. Or you can talk to or survey your current clients to garner some first party info on them. Solutions, what are the answers to these questions? Company role in the solution, what features? Services, products, information do we have that will solve this issue? Depending on the size of your company, for the solutions and role in the solutions, you could ask your sales team how they would answer the questions that personas would be asking. After going through this process, your content topics will end up being right in front of your eyes. In relation to aligning your content with the audiences and stage that the person is in, your solutions answers help define the topics that you should develop content on for the attention and lead stage so people can know about, they can learn and believe in those topics. Your role in the solutions answers helps you define the topics you should focus on for the deal and upsell stages so people can learn about and understand your business and how it helps them. Then bringing it full circle, the goals answers help to define the content that you can then put together for the retention and advocate stages in order to support the connection between the products or services that you're providing and their set of goals. On the quantitative side, you can add a step in your process after all of the qualitative pieces are completed that uses topic scoring, which in essence is a score based on three factors. How important the persona is to the business, how important the topic is to that persona, and how much unique value you can add to the topic. It's an optional based on, on business type. Once you score each topic, you'll have a full plan of what to tackle when. The same process really helped when we worked with a digital transformation IT firm who had international offices. Now this meant that despite the persona's position being the same, the topics shifted significantly because of the cultural differences between all the countries. Going through the process of looking at their goals, their challenges, the questions, the solutions, and then scoring them meant that we knew which content to develop for which offices and at what time. As a part of our free strategy session, we can review the topics that you have for audience and stage alignment. 
Golden nugget number three will absolutely be very valuable on the SEO and content engagement side of things if done correctly. Search engines see the internet as well as your website and content as a web of connections based on ideas or topics. So golden nugget number three is to create content clusters or whatever eloquent name you want to call them. The idea is to look across all the topics that you have and you'll see common themes jump out or topics that can cluster around one idea. You can align these ideas into levels of information. We found that three levels works the best. Now we call them pillar content, category content, and subcategory content. When we're planning this out, the pillar is normally one to three words, a high level topic or idea. Each pillar has categories within it, and then each category has subcategories within them. So for example, let's say you provide services related to consulting small businesses on growth. The pillar could be business financials, the category could be accounts receivable, and the subcategory could be ways to lower the turnaround time of your AR. Or the pillar could be management, the category level topic could be leadership, and the subcategory could be how to motivate employees. Now each of these three levels, the pillar category and subcategory, will have content built for them. So you will then have a pillar content piece, multiple category content pieces that tie into the pillar, and multiple subcategory content pieces that tie into each of the categories as well as the pillar. The idea is that your content connects, just like our brains do, into topics that connect with other related topics. Luckily, that's how search engines work as well when they're looking at your content. You see, they see a web of content around core ideas. So both from a human and SEO perspective, you prove your company is very knowledgeable about everything related to those core ideas. So tactically, you achieve the results of a content cluster by website content tagging or connecting, meaning people could search by cluster and other content is offered based on the cluster that they're interested in. Content shows in clusters on your website audience focus pages, which you hopefully have on your site already. The most important piece to set up is you have to have internal links between the content in each cluster for this to work. Lastly, domain authority and page authority SEO increases due to heightened authority based around one idea. At Dakota Ridge, we worked with a medical billing company in Florida who has well, diverse offerings for their clients across 11 different services. But when we built out their content clusters, aspects of what they do aligned. And it ended up there were five main content pillars with numerous cat category level and subcategories within them. Based on these connections with their audiences, they're already garnering leads from the content. For golden nugget number four, an important piece of exceptional content is of course how you build out and develop the content itself. So nugget number four is to adhere to the top guidelines for content development. Dependent on the channel, there is a lot to this aspect of creating exceptional content. So I'll have to give you the abridged version, focusing more on written content. SEO, the whole point of content, is to drive attention, develop leads, nurture them and get sales, and SEO is a huge part of that. So plan your keywords for each content piece. Start with the topic for your content piece and look where it lies in your content cluster, you know, the pillar, category and subcategory, to guide your potential keywords for the piece. Use either Google Keyword Planner or some other tool to generate those ideas. To keep it straightforward for each content piece, you're looking to have two levels of keywords. Short tail, one to two words, that is uh, business finance. Or long tail keywords, three plus words, that is lower the turnaround time of my AR. Plan. It helps to get a quick plan down on what channels the content is for, which audience personas it's for, a run through of top ideas to convey, what keywords are needed, and any CTAs, call to actions, that you want to add. Develop. To actually develop the content, you want to start by writing out the content. Read it out loud and edit it a few times. 
Make sure your keywords are in there. Without keyword stuffing or excessive use of keywords, add in links, think about the content cluster, and use internal links to connect up this content piece with the other pieces in the cluster. Also add in outbound links, as that helps with your CEO. Imagery-wise, unfortunately, there's so many blogs out there with just a header image, and that's it. And then endless text. As 90% of info transmitted to the brain is visual, add in photos, diagrams, and charts to get your points across, making sure they are placed to align with the copy. Add alt text on all images to help with SEO. And all of your imagery should also align with your brand. Canva software is a marketer's best friend if you don't have a designer at hand. Last but not least, add in your CTAs, your call to actions. Think about your content in relation to the bigger picture. Is this just informational content used to gain attention? Is there a next step that you want your reader to take? Have a good mixture of CTAs in the content so it's not overkill, but it's right there to entice people to take action. You can have both graphical CTAs as well as text links within the content. You will of course need to set up any needed pieces of the CTA, uh, for example, this could be a, a pop-up form, you know, when they click on a button, then connect up that lead information to your CRM, have email automation set up, and easy download of the lead magnet content. The combination of these guidelines will help bolster any generic content to exceptionally performing content. If your strategy session application gets approved, we can assess these aspects as part of your free session. Creating exceptional content does take a bit of time and energy. So it is important to get the most bang for your buck, as they say. And that's where nugget number five comes in. Strategize how each piece of content can be repurposed. If you're creating a blog post, don't just publish it on your site and leave it at that. If you're putting together an educational video, don't just post it on YouTube and be done. If you're writing up an ebook, don't just have the PDF on a web page and send some traffic to it. For every piece of content you create, when you're putting the plan together, also go through the process of thinking how else that content can be used. A few examples of this methodology are uh, articles and blog posts are great for driving traffic to your website if everything aligns, and hopefully will over time due to SEO. But you can enhance that content with content upgrades. Usually the articles are theoretical in nature, you know, discussing an idea, a method of doing something, or some value-based piece of information. What happens though when the reader is excited about actually putting that theoretical idea into practice? They usually won't jump right then and buy your service or product, as it's somewhat related to the topic of the article. A content upgrade is an actionable item that is associated with the article that can be downloaded or gotten by providing the information in a form. This could be a, a template to use, a specific calculator, a spreadsheet set up for their use, something that takes them to the next step of putting whatever theoretical ideas are in the article into practice, and of course, get you a new lead from it. Social posts are always an easy way to repurpose content, and of course, helps promote it. Whatever the original content is, take quotes from it, take images from it, take ideas from it to use on your social channels and drive content and engagement there in addition to awareness of your business. Also, don't forget to not only share content on your company page, but have your employees also share and post on their accounts. An easy one is newsletters. Based on the channel, a majority of your content is probably focused on the attention stage trying to garner more awareness and engagement from new business prospects. People in your email lists may have not seen the content and therefore can't benefit from it. So those same articles, the podcasts, the videos, the white papers, etc., can be shared with your network in newsletters. And this can serve to cover everything from nurturing leads to driving up the brand value for current clients, increasing retention. Now, hopefully you've put the time and effort into developing case studies from your best clients. These should not only be strategically placed on your website. You can use these in both your deal stage drips and your upsell drips to showcase your expertise, uh, the breadth of services and products and results that you can achieve. Not to mention it takes care of the social proof side of marketing. 
at Dakota Ridge, we just went through some repurposing planning with an accounting and uh, consulting uh, firm in Houston. They had content built prior to us working with them, as well as new content being developed. But based on the plan model we used in our three-step plan, build, and run process, all their content needed repurposing across the diverse channels that we were building out. This increased the effectiveness of each content piece as well as the ROI, the return on investment, because the ratio between content creation cost and the results is much better. Now for the final golden nugget. Let's bring it full circle back to the original why. As I started with, the goal for your content is to have it drive attention for your business, engage people, and ultimately be a revenue generator. But how do you know whether that is occurring without the right reporting setup? Number six is make sure your goals and metrics and reporting of those goals and metrics is set up. The underlying idea is to connect up your higher level mission and business goals with the metrics for the different channels you're using in your marketing. Because you see, the whole point is that what your marketing is doing on a day-to-day -day basis actually is moving your business in the direction that you want it to go. This is the hierarchy we use to align channel metrics up with business goals. To focus in on the middle three, objectives are the qualitative business goals that will help you reach your vision. The key results are the quantitative results that will help you achieve those objectives. And the metrics are the channel-specific numbers and rates of change you need to hit to achieve the key results you laid out. A good rule of thumb is to use totals for key results. For example, we want to hit 7.5 million in revenue this year and then use rate of change for metrics. For example, our uh, webinar lead gen should increase by 10% month over month. And take a look across your marketing channels and develop metrics for your needs. You can easily do some research on channel and industry norms for these metrics as a starting point. After you have your goals and after you have your metrics in place, you need to be able to actually report on them. This means setting up tracking for all of your channels, as well as the way in which you'll be reporting the results. For website tracking, if you're not using Google Tag Manager, it really makes life easier, as you can manage all of your tracking tools and tags from one easy-to-use dashboard, as well as you only need to put one snippet of code on your website. For reporting, our suggestion is to use reporting and dashboard tools to align everything, as there's usually a number of different channels and you know, capturing all the metrics manually to report on them can be absolutely cumbersome. Something like Domo or Clipfolio can enhance your view into what's truly going on with your content, what strategies and tactics need to be reviewed, and what part it's playing in your business growth. Now, we'll be able to discuss how your business goals are meeting up with your marketing campaigns and metrics during our strategy session with you. Building the marketing strategies behind content, the topics and clusters that engage, completing the actual development, the publishing and promotion of content, and making sure it all leads to business results are some of the areas that we are lucky enough to work with our clients on. Our clients are B2B companies with seven to eight figure annual revenue who usually have built to where they are now through sales focused strategies or some marketing, but know that a comprehensive marketing strategy plus effective implementation is the way to truly achieve a new level of growth. Each of our engagements also requires some work from the owners, the executives and employees of the company, as we, we can't be the face of the business. For some of our channels, like an educational video or podcast guest spot, we lay the groundwork, develop the content, and guide clients, but they do need to put in the time and effort to show up and get it done. Now, we love working with business people who are passionate about building a strong structure of marketing that can benefit the company for years to come, as opposed to looking for one-off campaigns that may just get a few more sales. We feel that any successful business partnership truly needs to be mutually beneficial. We only succeed when you succeed. A part of the reason we do what we do is to be able to help businesses who know their marketing could be better, but don't have the internal resources or knowledge set 
to achieve the desired results. If you're potentially facing that roadblock, well, the best place to start is by strategically and tactically looking across your marketing to unearth opportunities. We love going through the feedback needed on all aspects of a B2B company's marketing, which is provided as a part of our complimentary strategy session. But of course, we can't be providing access to our strategists and a comprehensive report for every business. So a quick application process is needed to receive the complimentary session. Now, you can easily fill that out below and we'll let you know if it's been approved as soon as we can. We'd just like to thank you so much for taking the time out today to dive into the top ways to develop exceptional content that gets attention engages and drives sales for your b2b company i hope they help to enhance your content and we look forward to receiving your application and seeing your business results come to fruition thanks so much bye, -bye.